Hey, welcome back to Everyday Economics, the podcast that helps you learn about the economic world happening around you every day. I'm your host, Chris Krug, CEO of the 501c3 nonprofit, nonpartisan Franklin News Foundation. Everyday Economics is a production of America's Talking Network. You can subscribe to all of our podcasts at americastalking.com. We are recording this episode on Friday, July 26th. And joining me as always, my friend and colleague, Dr. Orfe Devangi, PhD economist, Dr. O. Let's get into the discussion that, that uh, you and I were having offline about uh, the PCE number that came out and then GDP. Uh, the connection between these two, I, I find it fascinating when you talk about them in combination. So I'm going to wind you up and turn you loose. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I mean, GDP shows up, uh, Q2, uh, by the way, it's an advanced estimate at 2.8%. And why I say advanced because there are going to be some revisions and I expect the revisions to be a little bit lower. Uh, so you have, uh, an economy that supposedly accelerated in the second quarter, uh, faster, almost twice as fast, growing almost twice as fast as in the first quarter. And, uh, and faster than even Q2 of last year. What do I make of this? I make, of, I mean, look, I mentioned er, er, in an earlier podcast that look, GDP is basically a combination of, uh, people making, uh, building widgets, hours worked and productivity, right? The, the, the actual people working and then the how, how good and how efficient, uh, they are at making those widgets. And so, uh, so we're getting a little bit of both. We saw Q1, Q2 employment growth. Employment growth slowed from the previous year, but we're still adding workers and total hours worked are increasing. So GDP increases. Uh, and then we have uh, potentially some productivity gains uh, coming from, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe perhaps this AI revolution uh, that we're living in right now. Right. And all of the investments in AI that are likely going to show up in, in those numbers, even as consumers, uh, continue to slow, uh, to slow down. Uh, another thing we saw in this, at least in today's PCE numbers is income growth as expected, consumer spending revised up. Oh, right. And I think that's, uh, I think that's the thing that is, uh, kind of interesting. Because up until well, now, with a slowing labor market, we expect consumers to kind of cool down. Right. To, yeah. Let's let's talk about this. That yeah. that seems to be contradictory. Weren't we thinking that perhaps there'd be less money to be spent in this economy? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it basically savings continuing to dwindle. Uh, we would we would think that by now the excess savings accumulated during the pandemic had basically vanished but basically we saw consumers i mean in the latest consumer sp- consumer uh pce report uh we saw moderate consu- moderate spending growth essentially we see that consumers are kind of taking a step back but in the two previous reports we saw an upward revision in consumer spending uh that was in there before and so basically while consumers are still slowing down they may not have slowed as fast as we thought they had. Interesting. Uh, based on the pre, on the upward revisions. Um, so that's what we're seeing. Consumer spending, uh, uh, 2.6% year over year in June. Disposable income growth slowed to 1% year over year in June. And so you can see that the labor market cooling means essentially income growth could be cooling. And basically, that's going to be kind of the the backstop, right? That's going to kind of have to force consumers to slow down. People aren't quitting their jobs. They're not looking around as much because there's not as much to look look for. But we're still spending at higher levels. We're spending less, but we're still spending. You're you're correct. We're spending less than we were a year ago or two years ago, right? uh, But still spending at a pretty high level, and. at least, at least our increase in spending is faster than our increase in income, which basically means that our savings are dwindling, right? That we're, we're digging into our savings. We're digging into our accumulated 
perhaps accumulated housing wealth. We're digging into all those things that we've accumulated, uh, perhaps some of the stock market gains that we've made during that time where the stock market was on a tear. Uh, and so all of those things uh, suggest to me that in order to keep the U.S. economy humming, the Fed will eventually have to cut interest rates. Because if the labor market comes to a sudden halt, uh, then consumers will be in trouble. Uh, reading from the Wall Street Journal uh, story that, that that you and I were talking about, um, sort of, you know, this simply, you know, what's going on here with regard to um, to spending. The pace between Q1 and Q2, it's still a, above what was forecast, you know, with regard to spending itself. Absolutely. I think it's a, it's the part that's kind of still surprising. Well, even though consumers are slowing down, uh, it's still a much higher than we thought it'd be, especially given the slowdown in income and the cooling of the labor market, right? Uh, yes, people have jobs, but wage growth has eased. Uh, total income, personal income growth has slowed and so has, has fallen, essentially. So, you know, it's really interesting to see that consumers are still out there spending at the current pace. We would expect that pace to slow down uh, more than it has so far. Yeah, good stuff as always. For Dr. O, Orfe Divangi, this has been Chris Krug. Subscribe to Everyday Economics and dozens of high-quality podcasts at americastalking.com. <laughs>